food chains give the right idea, but a single food chain is way too simple to explain what really goes on in an ecosystem. Let me show you a more accurate picture of the meadow ecosystem. Is there only one food chain? Of course not. Hawks eat squirrels, mice, and small birds, as well as snakes. A more complete picture includes multiple and overlapping food chains. If you show how many food chains in an ecosystem are connected, you have a food web. This example food web shows multiple food relationships between living things in the meadow. For example, caterpillars eat grass and are eaten by frogs and two different species of birds. What does a food web show? A. How food chains are connected. B. How many plants there are in an ecosystem. C. How many animals there are in an ecosystem. Or D. How a spider's web is spun. Yes, a food web shows how food chains are connected. Now it's your turn to explore a food web. Here is a coastal marine food web. Study the food web and choose the correct animal to fill in the blank spot. The choices are seal, coral, giant kelp or sea urchin. That's right, seals eat fish and crabs. Did you get that the missing animal was the seal? Coral, kelp, and sea urchins do not eat fish or crabs. The seal is the most logical choice. Of course, this food web is not complete. It shows seals at the top, and there are animals that eat seals. Can you think of anything that might eat a seal? Perhaps a large shark. A truly complete food web would show every single plant and animal species that occupies an area. On this scale, a food web that detailed would probably cover a city block. In fact, drawing a complete food web is not possible today because we don't yet know all the species of insects or bacteria and other things that live in a real meadow. Instead, scientists create partial food webs to try and understand how a small part of an ecosystem works. In the case of a seal and a fish, the seal is called a predator and the fish it eats is called its prey. A predator is an animal that feeds on other animals and the prey is an animal that is food for the predator. Here's a quick question to try. Suppose a frogfish eats another reef fish. What is the frogfish? A. A predator. B. The prey. C. A non-living ecosystem member. Or D. Part of a meadow ecosystem food web. The frogfish is the predator and the reef fish is the prey. Virtually all animals in a food web have adaptations that help them survive and be successful in their native food web. An adaptation is a characteristic that helps an organism survive in its environment. The frogfish is well adapted to living in the food web of the reef. 
Its adaptation is a natural camouflage that makes the frogfish hard to spot. Some animals are adapted to blend into their environment to protect themselves from being eaten, and other animals are adapted to blend into their environment so they can surprise their prey. A rattlesnake uses its natural camouflage both ways. The rattlesnake uses camouflage to avoid being eaten by a hawk and so it can ambush its unsuspecting prey. Natural camouflage is a very common type of adaptation. You find it in virtually all food webs. I want to show you another special animal that uses camouflage. This is a leafy sea dragon. Can you see how easily it can blend into floating seaweed or a kelp bed? This is a decorator crab. Decorator crabs use various materials from their surroundings to camouflage themselves. This crab will literally pick up pieces of plant life, coral, or other small pieces of its surroundings and place those things on its back and appendages. The decorator crab is the master of disguise. Of course, what works in one food web can be a disaster in another. Put the frogfish in an ecosystem with a sandy bottom and it would be an easy target for a predator. Whenever an ecosystem changes, the members of the food web can be affected. 